Gotta say, I did not see this one coming. I was pretty excited when I found out about this. What we've got here today is a collab version of the One Too Many keyboard from Ducky and HyperX. Now, HyperX obviously needs no introduction in the gaming space, and the Ducky One Too Many has reached like near iconic status at this point. It really paved the way for mainstream adoption of small form factor boards. But a lot has changed since that keyboard debuted. It seems like the keyboard market itself has gone crazy over the past year. So the big question is, does this do something different? Does this move the market forward in any significant way? Or is this just a fresh coat of paint? We're gonna find out. You ready? Let's go. Today's video is sponsored by Lethal Gaming Gear. Based in the US, Lethal is a one-stop shop for all of your mouse performance needs. They now offer custom paracords for a wide variety of mice that include 3D printed stress reliefs. No more heat shrink, no more flames, no more inconsistent installs. These give you a perfect fit in that factory fresh aesthetic to keep you swiping fast and looking clean. They also keep a full stock of micro switches, skates from Core Pad, Tiger Orc, and Tiger Orc 2, as well as the Core Pad grips for the hottest mice in gaming right now. Offer Offering one day processing on orders and one to three day shipping anywhere in the continental US, they can get your gear in your hands fast. New custom cable drops go live every Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern and ship out the following Monday. Need something you don't see on the site? You can always contact them and request it directly. When you're ready to elevate your game, don't get heated, get lethal. Click the link in the description below. Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're checking out the One Too Many collab keyboard from HyperX and Ducky. Retailing for $109.99, a $10 increase from the standard version. The HyperX version of the Ducky One Too Many includes their own HyperX red linear switches and a new red bottom case color. The unboxing experience is nearly identical to the standard One Too Many with the same design and all the same accessories, so you still get the dust cover, the branded USB-C cable, the keycap puller, a handful of accent keycaps, red unsurprisingly, and Ducky's latest custom spacebar. They do include a HyperX branded keycap as well, but this key is not made by Ducky and the quality difference is very apparent. So the case bottom here is in gloss red, exclusive to the HyperX edition. Otherwise, dimensions, weight, form factor, layout, all that stuff is the same. There's no creak anywhere on the frame, there's minimal side flex, Pretty pronounced top and bottom flex. Nothing we haven't seen before from the One Too Many. I'm not gonna rehash an entire top to bottom review of the One Too Many keyboard. I think by now we all are familiar with this. We know exactly what it is and what it isn't. So we're gonna focus on the differences. There has been some updates and refreshes to the One Too Many as a platform, and those are all reflected here as well. So you've got the additional LEDs under the space bar like we saw on the One Two SF. So the lighting really pops there with the custom space bar. The other difference with the lighting is that the HyperX switches are raised dip LED, which means that the LED is on top of the switch itself. This actually does result in brighter lighting versus the original and particularly with regard to the characters themselves. These were both tested with the stock cables and both in standard USB 3 ports. Because they are using the raised dip LEDs here, this PCB is actually manufactured exclusively for this version. One thing you either like or don't about the Mini is the lack of software. Everything, per key lighting included, happens on the board itself, and this one supports Ducky Macro 2.0 as well. And despite being a HyperX collab, this isn't supported by their Ingenuity software, which is not great software, so that's a plus, but it still leaves those of you who prefer having remap and lighting software out in the cold, as Ducky themselves have also not ever made good on a compatible software. The HyperX Red Linears are a solid switch for gaming. At 45 grams, they have the same action actuation force as Cherry MX Red, but they have a shorter actuation point and total travel distance, 0.2 millimeters shorter in both metrics, which should make them faster. They're also rated at 80 million keystrokes, but I don't have any way to test that, obviously. They feel smoother than Cherry MX Reds to me, more like a Gateron Red, less stem wobble than both, but we're talking subtleties. Like, if you already have a one too many with MX Reds already, you're good. I typed a lot on this board over the course of a couple days to see if I could get it to demonstrate any kind of key chatter whatsoever, as it's been a problem for some users on previous Ducky boards, and I can confirm that this copy at least has zero issues with key chatter. Stabilizers here are pretty standard fare for Ducky boards as well. These are lubed from the factory. I rate them as like high mids for a production board. With the custom space bar, which is thinner for that RGB effect, I get a nasty little clicky sound, like there's some surface rattle there. It looks great, but I can't stand to type on it personally, I much prefer the sound of the stock spacebar.
I have heard of there potentially being fitment issues when you're using thicker PBT caps on these switches that have the LEDs on top, like especially like the Matrix, because those are like really thick. I didn't have any issues with the couple sets I tested from Matrix, nor any of the replacement sets that Ducky provides either, but your mileage may vary on that. So ultimately what we have here is a one too many with the latest quality revisions and what I feel are probably the best standard red linear switches available for it. Not just in feel, but I like what it offers for the lighting too. The case color is totally subjective. So groundbreaking, nah, not exactly. It's a nice addition to the lineup and HyperX's involvement will likely make attaining this a little bit easier than trying to get your hands on a regular one too many even if it does come with that $10 upcharge. Sadly, HyperX and Ducky currently have no plans to release a version of this board with HyperX's Aqua Tactile Switches. I like those. I'll always have a special place in my heart for the one Two mini as a platform, but the plastic frame definitely turns some people off with the amount of aluminum options in the market now, and it comes with the same drawbacks that exist for most all standard 60% layouts. Small size aside, the biggest plus is that nearly every keycap set you can find will fit it no problem. Downside, of course, is no dedicated arrow keys like on a 65%, like the Hades 68 from Durgod, but it's more challenging and often more expensive to find sets that 100% support a 65% layout. Also happy to say that I received confirmation from Ducky that they've completed the retooling for all of their own internal keycap sets, so pretty soon, the 1-2 SF will be supported across the board. Whether you would or should prioritize this version of this board over the standard 1-2 mini probably comes down to how much you'd like to color red. Outside of the pole polarizing color scheme, this is arguably the most technically complete version of this board. If I seem a little flat about it, it's because I am. When I first heard these two were going to be working together, I was really excited to see what they were going to bring to the table. It's a solid board. There's just not enough new here to get really excited about. As always, links to everything we talked about today down in the description. Any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, Stay up.